Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Perkins and today I'm talking to author Everdeen Brickwood. Everdeen writes young adult science fiction and um, adventure mysteries as well as cosy mysteries. A Half Moon Adventure will be published July this year and is a young adult adventure mystery. Hi Everdeen, welcome and thank you for coming back on Book Talk Radio Club. Hi Claire, thank you so much for having me. Would you like Great to tell book, oh thank you? Would you like to tell book talk radio clubs listeners about a half moon adventure? A uh, half moon adventure, I think, is the novel that's most autobiographical for me. Okay. Um, and it's the only novel that I've written in German. It's being translated into English uh, as we speak. Right. So and that's why it will be out only in July. Um, it's about uh, well, there's there's a fictional part to it, but uh, it's basically based on on my life as a teenager okay so yeah the the, the, the main character I, isabel is regressed through hypnotism to a different lifetime what so why did you choose regression is this something you've experienced yourself then you're saying it's, it's kind of autobiographical no no that part i have never experienced oh, okay. the, um it's it's one of my uh, interests if you like. Right. Um, I came across Dr. Brian Weiss books um, some time ago, years ago, and I, I think I read four of them. He is um, the chief uh, psychiatrist at Mount Sinai um, Hospital in Miami, right. as far as I'm informed or I remember. And uh, he was a complete, um, uh, he, he didn't believe in this sort of thing at all. He didn't use hypnosis and he wasn't interested in that and he said it's all rubbish. And through one of his patients who, uh, you know, he hypnotized and her symptoms got better and better and better, he actually changed his mind and he wrote books about these experiences. So I've, I've researched it quite a bit and I thought I'll just put it in the book and see what happens <laughs> people are interested. Absolutely. A half moon adventure is set against the background of the 1970s, an era many of your young readers obviously will not have experienced themselves. I was a teenager in that era, and if I'm correct, she would have been too. Tell me, <laughs> giving away our ages now, tell me, what are your fondest memories of the 1970s? Uh, I actually, <laughs> I don't know, fond, I don't know, fond, not so much, uh, close with uncomfortable shoes were uncomfortable I don't know if you remember that but I, I felt like you know t-shirts all had to be so tight and it's, it's one of the things that I remember it's really ridiculous but I mean being so young you don't pay a lot of attention to politics and all this sort of thing but no of course not um, I think f I was very fond of the music, like ABBA. I discovered ABBA, I think, when I was 12. I was just going to say that, ABBA. Yeah, and, and the musical hair when I was, I think, 17 or so. Yeah. And I thought, um, yeah, that, that kind of influenced me a lot during those years. Right. That's, yeah, I would call them a fond memory. <laughs> <laughs> you originally published this book in German, as you said, and you've now decided to publish in English. Do you intend to publish any of your other books in different languages? Uh, some of my books are already available in other languages. Okay. Um, yeah, like uh, Children of the Moon, there's a German version. Right. And um, Singing Lizards as well. Um, a, a publisher is currently looking at my books on Africa uh, to translate them into Afrikaans. Right. Um, if they find enough in the books that would interest Afrikaans readers. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> That's a good idea. It's a good idea. So what inspires you to write your young adult novels? My novels, um, it's actually my own life because I, I've led quite an adventurous life, <laughs> mm -hmm. if I may say so. I, I travelled a lot when I was a teenager and a young adult and um, I kept diaries while I was travelling uh, as much as possible, very often just the keywords and so on. But I... I think a lot of it is based on my own adventures. Right. <laughs> and um, I always add paranormal, um, slightly paranormal or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, surreal uh, elements to it, like the hypnosis. Um, and also, like my Africa books have got uh, an element in it with witch doctors and this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically where I get my inspiration from. <laughs> 
you write for two different age groups, obviously young adults and, and adults. Do you find it easy switching between the two when writing, or is there, is there not much of a difference when writing for the two? Um, I would say um, it's more difficult to write uh, the fantasy books because I have to create a whole completely new world in prehistory. Um, Sorry, can I just interrupt you because... the, for listeners? So the fantasy books are for young adults, yes? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the science fiction books right. um, on time travel in prehistory. Um, a lot of my readers read both genres. So I'm, a, I'm a cross, they call me a cross-genre author. Uh-huh. Um, they, you know, like when I, when I meet with book clubs, they buy all of these books. And the adults read, sometimes the young adult and, uh, you know, the children, are, you know, depending on their age, they, they're interested in the novels as well. So um, I did. It's a different it's a different genre. Um, so I have to switch a bit when I go into another genre. But my readers seem to be interested in both. That's great. Well, obviously, that's the secret now. So selling books, you've got to be able to cross genre right. <laughs> uh, you know, there, there are authors around who write completely different genres, like horror and children's and whatnot, you know. I suppose that's why they're used in different names. Yes, but yeah. In my case, you know, I use the same name and, yeah, the readers seem to be interested in both. Would you like to give a brief synopsis of your cursory mystery novel, Singing Lizards First and then The Rhino Whisperer? Um, okay, let me think. Singing Lizards... Um, is based on um, my life in Botswana. I was in Botswana for two years, and I also added uh, like a mystery element to it with witch doctors and so on. And it's it's about twins. Uh, it, it starts in England, in Cambridge, and the, they're very different um, people, those twins. And the one goes missing in Botswana, and the other one goes to Botswana to find his sister. Right. So that's singing lizards. And the Rhino Whisperer is set in South Africa, and um, it looks at um, a lot of the crimes that are associated with Africa in general, mm. uh, like like uh, you know rhino poaching or you know poaching of wild animals and um, also human trafficking and things like that. And um, yeah, and what what the impact is on individuals and and society. But it is a novel, and it's written like a novel, so it's not. Um, you know, any kind of um, a non-fiction uh, book, <laughs> if you like, non-fiction story. Your cosy mystery novels are set in Botswana and South Africa. So why these two countries? I mean, you said you were born in Germany, then you moved from Germany to uh, Botswana and South Africa. Is this why you based your, the, the um, two books there, or, or why did you you know, base them in, in Germany? Yes. Not that you've got many um, rhinos well, wandering around in Germany, yeah, I might say. <laughs> the Half Moon Adventure is based in Germany and Pakistan because I also was in Pakistan as a teenager. Gosh, you but, did travel. Um, <laughs> yeah, tra- <laughs> I was invited to a wedding and it's all about that, you know, like yeah, what I experienced in Pakistan. But, um, yeah, of course, you know, living in Africa, uh, I lived in Botswana, I live in South Africa now, uh, influences... Uh, the topic of my books or the theme. Yeah. So living in Africa, I think it comes natural that I would write about Africa as well. And I will write more about more books about Africa. I've got a few things planned already. <laughs> as an indie author, you're very active when it comes to marketing your books. What bit of advice would you give new indie authors? Um, I would say don't, don't um, rest on your laurels <laughs> once you've published your book. Um, marketing is so important. It's it's really. Uh, I know it's a different hat. You put it on a different hat. You you the author. You're quite introvert. You you write your book and then it's out. It's published, and then the marketing starts. Absolutely. And even if you have a publisher, I had two publishers in the past, and I still had to do the marketing. Mm. So if you have a publisher, uh, and quite good publishers. Um, you still have to do the marketing. So familiarize yourself with the concept. Use what's out there. Like, I mean, Book Talk Radio Club is a fantastic platform for me. I was hoping you were going to say something. Thank you. Get the word out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can only recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. 
you're doing a fantastic job, Claire, yeah. honestly. And I, I know all the other authors going with you also say the same thing. It's, well, thank it's you. It's really one of the best promotions around. Yeah. I know that when when a lot of people, they think they're just going to going to write the book and that's it, then they don't have to do anymore. And they're totally that's unaware true. of, as you say, putting on a totally different hat to, to actually get yes. the book out there. I mean, you can have you can, uh, written and published the most wonderful book, but if no one knows about it, that's it. You, you... That's right. You have, you have to get, eye, we call it the eyeballs on books. You exactly. Know? You, have to, you exactly. have to get people to to see your books and you have to make a plan how you're going to do that and and be more extrovert, talk to people, um, go out and see readers, like uh, book clubs. Mm. Um, that's what do we have a, an author group here in South Africa. Right. Well, it's Hannesburg, based in Johannesburg. I'm sure there are others, but this is our group. And we go out and we meet with book clubs and we talk to people and they want to know things about us and they want to know things about the books. And uh, it's, it's really, it's wonderful, just the connection to the readers as well. And we do events, um, book introductions. We go into schools and read to children. And, yeah, we, we do a lot locally and globally. We also um, use more the Internet, I would say, to, to advertise our books. Right. Well, that's really interesting because I, I used to belong to a book club years ago. And, you know, now I, I can't find here in the UK any, as it were, physical book clubs. I'm sure they're lurking around somewhere because um, I'd love to be able to uh, go and speak to them about my authors, my book talk radio club authors. But I can't find any. But So I, I'm going to have to have another look because everything to me seems to be online at the moment. How do you find them? Uh, people approach me now because people know I write books, I'm an author. So right. they approach me and they say, do you want to come and speak to us here? And do you want to come to the library there right. and read? And uh, so, but I found it very difficult because they don't normally have websites. So <laughs> I look at all of them, you know. Yeah. It's really word of mouth. Uh, yeah, word of mouth. And um, people like family, friends, and yeah. That's how I do it. So what's and next? <laughs> what's next for Everdeen Rookwood? Um, I'm well busy with a half moon adventure, so that's going to be out in, I'd say July, August, mm. and then uh, the Rhino Whisperer will be translated into German because German and English are the main languages that my books are, you know, available in. Mm. And after that, um, the fourth book in the time travel series. Uh, I will finish that. Uh, it's already halfway written, but it's been lying around for a few years because I'm so busy with my adult books, or mm. young adult books. And um, yeah, and hopefully by the end of the year, it will be out and will be in a different, uh, there will be uh, quite a quite a big twist in the storyline. <laughs> Interesting. And then, and then I'm going to continue with that series, but um, I let my characters grow up. So yeah. So where Watch can, the space. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So where can Book Talk Radio Club listeners purchase A Half Moon Adventure and your other books? Um, the books, well, yeah, The Half Moon Adventure will only be out in a, in a couple of months. But, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, the books are usually available almost in every online store. Right. Like Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, um, Amazon and so on. And they're also available in print. So not just e-books, but also in print. And, yeah, you know, you must just go online and your favorite bookstore and have a look. Lovely. I think if you if you search for Everdeen Brickwood, all the books should come up. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank you, Everdeen. I wish you all the luck and plenty of sales, of course, for Half Moon Adventure when it comes too. out. Thank you. Please come back on Book Talk Radio Club when you've published. Um, and I'd love to chat with you and hear more. In the meantime, good, thank you. Good luck for the future. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Thanks, Everdeen. Thanks so much, Claire. Bye for now. Bye. There we go.